One of the most exciting things about painting is being able to portray light. And I tend to be drawn to scenes that have a strong light source. I like shadows and kind of highlighted areas with sunlight. And so today I'm gonna to talk about creating vibrant light in your paintings. So a couple things to think about when painting light. The first one is you can't have light without darks. This comes back to values. Without proper values in your painting, you can't really have vibrant light. So the first thing that I do is I look at my reference photo and I think about values. I'm looking for the brightest parts of the painting and the darkest parts of the painting. And so I wanna exaggerate the light on this building. The first thing I'm doing here is wetting down both sides of my paper. And again, I do this because I want the paper to lay flat, but also it gives me more time to work wet into wet in this first wash that I'm doing. So what I do right away is I lay in some warm color for this building that's gonna be the brightest part of the painting. And as I paint around this building, I already know that everything else I paint in this painting needs to be darker than what this building is. And so I'm moving around the painting, painting local color, the color of individual objects around the painting. And I'm keeping the sky fairly pale right now. And the reason I'm doing it this way is you'll see in my next wash, I will be painting the sky again because I want the sky to be darker than the face of this building. While your painting is still damp, after you've painted this first wash, you have an opportunity to lighten some of these values. And I'm doing this by taking a dry brush and taking off a little bit of the paint in key areas where I want the light to be the brightest. Adding a few little highlights of color. And now I'm gonna let my paper dry completely to prepare for the next wash. So now my painting is dried. And now I want a rich blue sky. And I want this sky to be pretty dark again because I want some contrast between the blue of the sky and where the light is hitting the building here. So I'm bringing my sky wash down. And something to keep in mind in this stage of the painting is you have to compensate for drying. Your washes are gonna dry about 25% lighter than what they are when they're wet. So keep that in mind. If I want this to be a deep blue sky, I need to make sure that I'm painting it dark enough and compensating for the drying and the fading that's gonna happen. All right, and I'm bringing my sky down to the tops of these buildings. And I'm gonna add in some trees on both sides of the paintings taking advantage of the sky wash and creating a soft edge there. And now I'm adding some cooler shadow colors over on the left side of the painting. And I'm gonna work my way left to right and I wanna connect this large shape. Trying to find connections within this middle value. Again, like I said earlier, the only way to get bright light on this building is to make sure that everything else is dark enough. And I keep going back to that because that was a growth area for me when I realized how dark I actually needed to paint. And I was mindful of that. That's when I started getting a real sense of light in my paintings. So I'm going to connect what I've painted already to a large shadow that's on the ground in the middle ground and in the foreground. Something I'm doing to make the light stand out even more is the shadow areas near that bright part of the building, I'm warming those areas up. And I think that creates a more of a sense of warmth and light in that part of the painting as well. Also by using warmer colors, it tells the viewer that this part of the painting is more important or different than the other parts of the cool shadows. I'm connecting the side of that building right into my figures and connecting my figures into the shadow shape that I've already painted as well. I've added the roof 
And now I'm moving into some more detail, smaller marks on my painting, a little bit of texture on the road. I'm going to do a wash over the part of that building that we see through the arch here. Once I do that, it brings more of the attention back to the lit up part of the building that I want to highlight. So I'm adding in a little more detail on my figures, a few darks here and there, some finishing touches. And here is the finished painting. So let's recap real quick. From my first wash, I've already determined what the brightest part of the painting is. And I keep that in mind through every step of the process. Also, I ensure that my washes, my paint is dark enough. Like I mentioned from the start, I can't have the light unless I have strong enough darks. And so by using fresh paint, and mixing thick mixtures of paint, I'm getting the proper contrast that I need for the light to stand out in this scene. And then the third thing that I did was I added some warmth around the brightest part of the building as well. And I think that helped to create the feeling of bright light. I hope you enjoyed that video lesson and I hope that it helps you to create vibrant light in your paintings. And I wanted to mention, if you haven't seen my free video lesson, Eight Tips to Avoid Overworking Your Painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below or you can get to it in my bio and Instagram. I've gotten some great feedback from this video lesson and it's been very helpful to solve a big problem that I have had to deal with and that is overworking your painting. So take a look at that video lesson and I'll see you next time.